the sheer variety of characters available in the Marvel Strike Force make it difficult for the new player to know what should I build? How do I put together a sustainable team? Who do I invest in? How do I build a foundation to get me into the later game? Well, we're going to talk about some strategies and concepts to let you do just that. Many successful sport franchises have a core group that they build around. And as long as that core is intact, the supporting players can assist them in achieving greatness. We're going to do something similar in this game. Your best case scenario is to build on S tier characters. And Icarus and Cersei are the best in the game. These two were designed as a two-piece and you're supposed to plug and play the rest. They're meant for the arena meta, but they're extraordinarily powerful. We're going to look here at my end game arena and just watch what they're able to do. Cersei has amazing control. Icarus is going to lay down the damage. They're difficult to get together as a team, but if somehow you were to get them in the early game, you definitely want to double down and build on that foundation. Get some protectors some healers to keep them alive and let those two go to work as solo characters they're good but you would need them to be together to really get the full effect I wouldn't build on just one at a time but I would lay a foundation if I could get both as this match is well in hand we'll move on to our next point the only other character I feel comfortable saying you should lay a foundation on is Kestrel same deal, she came into the game as a solo character designed to be plug and play. We have some footage here of Ultimus 6. My account here, this is my beginner account. You can see we're going with that plug and play. I got Kestrel, the rest of my team got damaged. We're just gonna put a new group in and let Kestrel do what she does. In this alliance, my account is woefully underpowered compared to the majority of the rest. I'm like bottom five in TCP. The enemies here severely uh, outclass me, but watch how we're able to participate with this team. So we're gonna see here the way Kestrel's kit works. She drops defense downs on opponent, and then if you attack an enemy that has defense down, Kestrel attacks the enemy with the lowest health. So as long as you keep the damage away from her, you have someone to draw the fire, she can just continue to knock out characters. Really good way to punch up in arena and in raids. The enemies on this node once again are stronger than I am, but we're able to put some work in. I'm able to get some points and this alliance is happy to have me around. So again, the overall concept is I'm just gonna reload the team. Kesha's doing all the work, so my focus is to just keep her alive. If the rest of my squad gets damaged, I'll just take them out put a new squad in and let Kestrel take me as far as I can into the raid. I have part of a plan. What pursuit? This is where most of us are gonna find ourselves in the early game. You have most of a team and you're trying to figure out do you have a strong enough nucleus to make something happen. The secret Avengers here have a great template to follow. They came in a game like this as a three piece. They have a protector, controller, and support. So they got somebody who's gonna take the damage, they got somebody who's gonna control the enemy, and they got somebody who's gonna heal. So they have a strong nucleus if you can follow that same blueprint. A team like this is built for survivability, for sustain, which is great. The only thing that's missing is the damage. So let's take a look at a few characters that can help us solve that problem. Damage dealers come in two flavors. On the first page, we have brawlers. Behind us, there's the spreadsheet msf.gg, and we got it filtered by the top 20 damage dealers in the game. Of that top 20, here's some people that are available early. Wolverine, you're gonna get them just from doing your dailies. Shang-Chi is in the Blitz store. Captain Marvel's in the Blitz store. Psylocke's on an early node. Chavez is on an early node, Black Panther's on an early node. So if you have a team that's full of sustain, again, here's a couple of people that you can just continue to plug in and keep chugging along. The second variety of damage dealers are blasters. 
So again, we have the top 20 listed by damage. And here's some people you can get early on. Killmonger and Thor are both in a raid store. They give you Punisher for free. Winter Soldier is on an early node. He recently got a rework to be with the Rebirth team, so he's powerful. None of these characters in themselves are extraordinarily game-breaking, but if you just need an extra punch, they can help get you what you need until you build something more solid. So what do we do if we have the opposite problem? I have the Infinity Watch girls, and they're very good damage dealers. However, I don't have any of their supporting cast. Adam Warlock's out of reach, as is Moondragon. So how do I keep them alive? Typically, damage dealers don't have much health, so I need some way to increase their sustainability so they can do their job. Let's take a look at a few players to help do just that. Support characters are difficult to come by. In the current game model, the support character is built in with the rest of the team. You can't really piece them out and use them separately. So we have a couple here that are decent. Squirrel Girl, hands down. She's available early game. She's what you need uh, when you're just starting out. Going along with that is Minerva. She can help you tackle harder content. She's in the uh, war store, I believe. Stitcher just represents the generic healer on the, the minion teams. So whether it's Hydra, Shield, Aim, they have a generic minion that perhaps you can peel off and use for some sustainability to keep your team going. Protectors are more abundant. So let's make sure we grab onto a couple of those. We got Captain America. He's recently reworked and people are saying that he is potentially the best solo tank in the game at this time. That definitely was the case when he came out and now with his reworks, there's an argument for that to be again. Luke Cage, they give him to you for free early in the game. He's not awesome, but he can take some hits. Hulk, just by doing your uh, activities, your achievements, you're gonna get plenty of Hulk shards, might as well put them to use. Silver Samurai, Highest armor and health stat in the game. He's really good. Kingpin, he has been reworked recently. He can act kind of as a tank and a buffer for the team. Drax is a self-taunting tank. So just by showing up, he's automatically gonna taunt, take some hits. He's not awesome. But again, if you're just trying to build some sustain for your characters to survive, here's a couple of ideas for you. So here's my baby web warriors. They don't have ghost spider as of yet. Now this is where things get tricky. This is a, a team where the damage is built in to Ghost Spider's kit, even though she's a controller. So we might say, well, hey, I'll just add some more damage to the team. That's not gonna help. We need some sustain to, to let the rest of the team do what they do. So again, probably a protector here would be most effective. But since we haven't covered controllers yet, let's talk about some of the good controllers in this game. So first off, we have Mr. Negative. So if you feel comfortable, you link your account to msf.gg and you're gonna get five Mr. Negative shards a day. That's a guaranteed farm, a lot better you're gonna get doing anything else in the game. He's relatively new, so his kit is amazing. He flips positive effects. He gets these minions that show up with him that cause bleeds, really good kit. If you don't wanna do that, you got Vision who can ability block and give offense down. Hawkeye who can remove taunts and give blinds. Jessica Jones who can remove positive effects from the enemy and remove negative effects from you. All available early in the game, great addition to any team. The most difficult part of the game probably comes right away in the beginning, and that's when you have to build everything piece by piece. But as we've already seen, there's a ton of characters you can get a hold of early. You're just trying to build something solid so you can push through the campaign nodes to unlock more stuff, more characters, more gear. There's plenty of orbs to open, so when you see something of high value, Lean on it, build something strong, and go ahead and have fun in the game. Please make sure you're standing for something in life, otherwise you'll fall for anything. Please make sure your loved ones know that they're loved, and if you enjoyed hanging out, please like and subscribe. Peace.